the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And when I spoke earlier about the sign and wonder, I was speaking in those tongues because I was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. And I was so overshadowed by the Holy Spirit that I did a, a really unusual thing by trying to find out what the tongues meant in the dictionary. And God brought forth the meaning in the dictionary as a confirmation of the interpretation, just giving us this understanding of who Elisha is. But I want to once again repeat, there was absolutely no alcohol at all involved. This was a phenomena of the Holy Spirit and it's such a wonderful thing when the Holy Spirit comes over you. It's a feeling like you've never had before. It's a freedom and it's just marvelous and I'm sure that you might yourself would like to experience it. But this feeling of the only Holy Spirit only comes when you invite Jesus, Yeshua the Messiah, to be your Lord and Savior. And I'm sure if you'd like to do that, if you could just pray this very short, simple prayer with me. Jesus will come and live in your heart. And he will deliver you from all your bondages. And it's the most wonderful thing to happen in your life. You will never be sorry. So if you'd like to pray with me, we'll pray. Father, please forgive me of my sins. I'm sorry. And Lord Jesus, will you please come and live in my heart and be my Lord. I thank you, and I love you. And in the name of Jesus, by his blood and the word of God, amen. It's a great honor to have our sister come. Jane, why don't you, why don't you come up here? Uh -huh. Father God, I just thank you for your wisdom, your discernment, your understanding, Father. Father, open up new and, and greater and more revelation knowledge to her, Father, because I know that she'll deliver it like you give it. And Father, I just praise you for it. I thank you, Father. I call that I count this a great honor, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise okay. God. I'm gonna do a little something so you'll understand the same one. We're not going to look at that just yet. All right. This is going to look a little crazy. Sermon notes. <laughs> Part of the sign and wonder. <laughs> the other part of the sign and wonder. Oh, my goodness. That's one of my daddy is. scriptures today, and I don't usually talk about them. Well, let me tell you this first. Last week, Friday night, I was praying, and I said, Lord, I have got to know if uh, I'm in your will to release this. Last night, Friday, I was praying, and I said, Lord, I've got to know. I'm 6.30 the next morning, I just was Whoa. like this, awake, and I had been up till 2 the night before, because I was real concerned about this, and I uh, kept singing this song by Freddie Haler that is the spirit of Elisha, coming of the spirit of Elisha. So I looked all around, I finally found the CD, and I put it in, I put it back on, I sat down in bed, and I was wide awake before I knew it. I don't know if I was asleep or what, but I did have a vision, and I saw Jesus walking towards me out of the desert. And he, his sandals were like the Roman sandals that wrapped all the way up to the knee. And his feet were all dusty. So you know, it's our worship that anoints and cleanses his feet. And that woman came in and she washed his feet with her tears and his hair. And he says, look, you haven't washed my feet, but look what this woman has washed my feet with her tears and, and her hair. as She was washing his feet. And he came over and stood in front of me and he said, when all of the children are offered up into idols, then I had asked him a question first. I said, why couldn't it be that I couldn't cast this thing out? And he said, when all of the children are offered up to idols, then the dogs 
eat the children's bread. Just say, come out of the people. And then I saw a banqueting table, table in heaven, and I had a ream of cheese, a round ream of cheese. And Betty Jean and Richard were in this vision. And they were next to a table, and they said, we have one thing that is on the table, one representation of everything that was on the table. But their representation is kind of like what we have. We see uh, dimly. It was in the, the, the physical. And then the cheese I had, you had cheesecake, but I had cheese. Then the cheese shrunk and it looked like a CD. And I had this leather, which I believe is a new wineskin. And I began to wrap it around the CD. And when I did, it fused to the CD. It's like no seams anywhere. It was kind of... So that was my confirmation that I should come and share this message. So that's why I'm here, because I saw that. Amen. Otherwise, I'm not sure I was going to share this exactly because this is really deep. And um, it, it's, it has a lot of scriptures. And it's something that the church has not heard. Or at least I have never heard it before. So if you will turn to Ephesians 2.11. I want to read some of these scriptures about the unity of the Jew and the Gentile. Believer in Yeshua. And this is Ephesians 2.11. It says, Therefore remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. So essentially he's saying, now here, remember, you were uncircumcised, called uncircumcised by the Jews. Okay, the uncircumcised were the Gentiles, the circumcised were the Jews. Now if you go to verse 14, it says, For he himself, Yeshua, is our peace, who has made both one, and has broken down the middle wall of separation, yeah. having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from two, the Gentile, the Jew, thus making peace. And he might in one reconcile them both to God, body, God's body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. So here we see where Paul understands that the Jews are supposed to come into the understanding of who Yeshua is. Because they can't worship in spirit and truth unless they come through the cross and the blood of Jesus. And it was meant for the Gentiles to receive the blood of Jesus and salvation. And it was meant for us to be one together. Amen. It wasn't meant for there just to be the Orthodox Jews and they're okay the way they are. And we're the Gentiles and we're receiving this wonderful anointing of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to go forth and God just needs to worry about them. You know, that's not our problem. No, it was meant for them to receive salvation just like it is meant for us Amen. to have salvation. So now, if you'll turn to John 17, 21, I want to read this scripture to you. <laughs> and it says, that they may be one. Here he is talking to the Jew, to the Gentiles, and the Jew. Well, he's talking here to the Jews, and he is making a prayer for him. And he's praying that they may be one as thou, Father, are in me, and I in thee. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. He goes on, he says, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given to them. This is about the glory. That they may be one even as we are one. I and them, 
thou and me, that they may be perfect in one, and the world may know that thou hast sent me. The world <coughs> may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory. Okay? Look what he said there. He said, that they may be one in us, that the whole <coughs> world will know me. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't have right now preaching that is reaching the whole world, that they know Jesus. Something happens when the anointing of the Jewish people in Yeshua combines and joins with the anointing that is on the Gentile believing church. And it says right there, when they are one, we will know his glory. Hallelujah. Now that's something we haven't seen yet. Yeah. That comes when there is the unity through Yeshua between the ancient anointings of Moses and the New Testament anointing. Amen. That's the one new man that will release this glory. But you know, we don't really know what that is. Okay, so I want to go to Malachi 4, 5. Because what I'm really going to preach about is Elijah. And it says in Malachi 4, 5, Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Now we know that our faith is in the roots of the Judaic uh, faith. They are the fathers. And Elijah's job before the great and terrible day of the Lord is to turn the hearts of the children to the hearts of the fathers and the hearts of the fathers to the children, that they may be one and know my glory. Okay, he says it again. Now, Jesus says it again in Matthew 17, 10. So here he is speaking of the fulfillment of the Old Testament, and Jesus says in 17, 10, and his disciples asked him, saying, why then say the scribes that Elias must come? Now, Elias is Latin for Elijah. That's the same thing. Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already, and they knew him not. But have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Now when he came, the Orthodox Jews did not understand that John the Baptist was the fulfillment of Elijah in the flesh. Likewise, they missed their time of visitation because they didn't understand that Yeshua was the Messiah in the flesh. Okay. But they, Jesus said he's foreshadowing something because obviously Malachi said before the great and terrible day shall come the spirit of Elijah. Okay? So before the return of Jesus, because that is the great and terrible day, there has to be an outpouring of the spirit of Elijah. Here's my question. Will we know him? The Jews didn't know him when he came the first time. Will we know him? Now, I'm going to share my sign on Monday. <laughs> One night, I don't know if you all know Frances Purrs. Some of you know Frances Purrs. Okay. She came to my house, and we were going to have a prayer. And I went out, and I hugged her. And I tell you, the spirit of God was so strong, man. We almost fell out right there in, the, in front of my house. And we went in, and we started praying. And um, I just was led we were kind of both led to do a word study because we had received a word from Rosalinda who gets prophetic words and God had told her the details are in the names. I thought, okay, details are in the names. So we decided there was a particular scripture on Elijah that, I don't know, for some reason, I don't even know why I picked it, but it was an unction 
that we would do a word study on this scripture. And I'm going to show you how a word study works. Alright. And this scripture is 1 Kings 19.15. Okay. I'm going to start in 13 and I'm just going to read it to you so you'll hear what it says. Maybe I should move this. Can you all see this? And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entry of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been, and he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken their covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain the prophets with the sword, and I even I only am left. They seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said to him, now here was Elijah's commission. This is the commission of the Lord to Elijah. Go, return in the way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when thou comest, here we are, and when thou comest, anoint Hazael. So he's going to, his commission is to bring an anointing. Anoint Hazael to be king over Syria, and Yehu, the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Meholah, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. Okay, so clearly he was <coughs> coming here to bring some anointings. Now these numbers at the tops of these words are how you link this English word to a Jewish word study to look up the meaning of that word. So this is how it works. The Old Testament is in here with these words, numbers on top. And so that number 2371, I would take and go to the back of this book. Helper. And see, I go to the back of this book and I would look it up. 23. 71. See? A king of Syria. Because God has seen. So he's giving the sight. What, he's, what Elijah is doing is putting an anointing of God's sight over Syria. Now Syria looks up to be a stronghold. Okay? So that's God is seen over Syria. Alright. So that's how the word study works. Now these were the words we looked up. Yehu, Nimshi, Elisha, Shaphat, and Abel, Melholah. Okay? Does that make sense? You all get what we looked up. Now, let me show you what they mean. After we looked them up. Hazael was a god of seeing. That's a seer. It's a prophet. Okay? Yehu is Jehovah. That also means salvation. Nimshi means to pull up, uproot, to pull up. So he came to bring this anointing, to anoint this, pulling up. This is the father of Elisha. So this is a generational anointing. Shaphat means to judge, pronounce a sentence. Abel Melholah was the grandfather, another generational anointing, that means meadow of the round dance. What is that? Well, that's a curious question. Prophet means to speak or to sing. Okay, so we know that Elisha came and the Lord told him to anoint God's sight, declare his sight and salvation over a stronghold. He told him to also anoint um, Nimshi to be the king over Israel, which means to pull up. So you're going to pull something up out of Israel. Then he told him to anoint Elijah, who carries the anointing to judge, you know, which is salvation, to carry the anointing to judge or pronounce sentence. Also, the anointing of the meadow of round dancing, some type of phrasing. That's what Elijah was commissioned to do. You see, it's right in the scripture, was his commission. So then Fran says to me, well, what do we do now? I said, well, I don't know. We're just, you know, just 
doing whatever we're thinking. So I said, I think we ought to pray in the Holy Spirit. So we began to pray in the Holy Spirit, and this presence of God came down, and you know what it feels like when the presence of God comes and you feel that, what we call drunkenness or silliness or joy and laughter, and you just kind of get real goofy, or you just, you know, that started, that came over us, you know. And so I started singing in the Holy Spirit. And as I was singing in the Holy Spirit, now this part I don't have, I can't confirm, but I'll just tell you what I saw. I began to sing a song that was like a raft. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. And I sang this verse <coughs> in tongues. And then I sang another verse in tongues that was like at the harmonic level. It's a little higher in the round so the two verses could go together. And I sang a third one. But after I sang the first voice, first verse, I had this knowing that an angel had come to pick it up to make a round with me. And then I sang the next verse and another angel came and he took those words and he did a round with me. Wow. And the third one came and he went in. And as I repeated this song, kept repeating it, and another one would come. And another one would come and I thought, oh my goodness, Lord, is this the whirlwind of Elijah? Who is this a meadow of round dancing. Wow. And I was singing in the Holy Spirit. And your church sings in the Holy Spirit all the time. Do you understand? I saw that. And Frances is sitting there. And she's, she's, she's not, she wasn't drunk at all in the Holy Spirit. She's looking at me like, oh, you're kind of nuts, you know. <laughs> and and uh, she's going, interpretation, 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 interpretation. We need interpretation, interpretation. And so I said, well, this is what I hear the Lord say. And this was the interpretation that he said of this song. Now, this is not the sign I wonder yet, so hang on. <laughs> but this is good. And this is what he said, that that interpretation was singing of the meadow of, of round dance. No, no way, I'm over it. Digging the well for all who labor for the harvest, so it shall be so. My words come to pass, sounds of the marching of God, round dancing of the meadow. Wow. So when you're singing in the Holy Spirit, wow. that's what you're doing. Wow. Do you know that in the Judaic culture, they had such a thing as they called the circle dance. And they believed that when you got out and you did the circle dance, that angels actually came and danced with you and ministered with you. Circle dance, the round meadow. Do you know what you're doing when you're singing in the Holy Ghost in here? Oh, thank you, Lord. Ooh. You are participating in the anointing of Elijah. Hallelujah. Oh, do you know who oh. he is, man? Glory. <laughs> man Thank you. Do you understand? We can't miss the time of our visitation. New Testament church. You've got to know who Elijah is because you have a purpose. Turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons and the sons to the fathers, lest I strike the earth with a curse. You've got a purpose, New Testament church. And it's not just to sit here and ignore Jerusalem. It is this anointing that will pull up Jerusalem into salvation. And you're carrying it in the drunkenness. And they're jealous of it. But I'm telling you and I'm imploring you, don't give up. Because you are carrying the anointing of Elijah. The anointing of Elijah that can pull the Jews into salvation to give us one new man. So the whole world will know that Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory. Glory. Do you see your purpose? Amen. It's more than just getting drunk and having a good time. Amen. Okay, now I'll get to the sign and wonder. So I began to sing on some more and I can only remember one line of what I sang. <clears throat> but the song changed. The first song I was singing was real beautiful. Well, this one sounded like I was in a pub. And it went like this. Shantaresa, sondabosa, rambaranda, da 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 da. Shantaresa, sondabosa, rambaranda, da 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 da. And I said, Bosa. What kind of a funny name is that? What is that? What is that to be singing in my tongues, Lord? What is that? Bosa, shantaresa, sondabosa. This went on and on. So for 20 minutes, I was so drunk in the Holy Spirit, I couldn't stop laughing, tears running down my face. And there's me. <laughs> and I am so drunk at this point, my, my, my words are even slurring, and I went, 
like this. Oh, that's it. <laughs> if Rosalinda can look everything up in the dictionary, I'm looking that word up in the dictionary. <laughs> so I go and I get him in. This is exactly what Fran does because whoever thought of looking your tongues up in the dictionary? She goes like this. <laughs> she rolls her eyes. Oh. She got her Bible. She turns. She's writing like this. Like, this prayer is meaning is stopped. Jane's off the edge. She's nuts. <laughs> so I went in the other room and I left her sit there and I came back with my super dictionary. Okay. Oh my goodness. Help her. Oh, help, help. Help her. I need you to take this one. Okay, so. This is what I did. I got in my dictionary. And I opened up the dictionary. You gotta hold the thing for me. And okay. she's. Okay, this is what I did. Went in the dictionary and opened it up. And she's sitting there ignoring me like, You've really lost your mind. Nobody's gonna look their tongues up in the dictionary. You gotta be kidding. And I go, Ha! I told you it's in the dictionary. Lord, it is right here. Now you listen to this. And she's not noticing. <laughs> and right here it is, and you can look at it. Bosa, Bosa, what does it mean? The same as booze, strong drink. <laughs> what, is the other meaning? what is the other meaning? To pull up Woo, as a means glory. of windless, to pull up. Okay, so what did we say? Busa means Booze, strong drink, our drunkenness, it's the anointing we're under to pull up. What are we supposed to be pulling up? Who means pull up? To pull up. Do you understand? Wow. The word in the dictionary, which is an archaic French word, which is the definition of what I'm singing in tongues, matches the definition of the word study of the anointing that is over Jerusalem, Israel, to pull the Jews up into salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, can you ever get that? Okay, so at this point, this is the sign of wonder. So at this, this, I'm telling you, so, so at this point, Fran gets really excited. She's like, oh, my God, and she runs around the thing, and she grabs him like this, and she's going, look up the rest of it, look up the rest of it, look up the rest of it. Okay, so I'm, I'm like this, you know, I'm going, Okay, let's look up the rest of it. <laughs> now, what do you think the chances are that we're going to find the rest of it are? Well, it's God. And let me tell you what, every one of them was in here. Okay, here's Shanta. Shanta. Shanta Reza Sondabosa. Here's Shanta. It is from Old French, another archaic Old French word. Okay? It has been transformed. We see it now in English as chanter. It means to celebrate in song, to sing. Wow. One who chants a song. The second meaning is the chief singer or priest of the chantry. And that was the church. The third one is the pipe which sounds the tenor or treble in a bagpipe. And we know that it says in the word of God that Satan had pipes in his chest. Uh -huh. That's right. Doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, look at that, and also, the fourth meaning is hedge warbler. That is a singing bird uh -huh. of the meadow. And who, what was that anointing? Abel Meloha, dance of the meadow. And what was he to do? He was to be the prophet. And prophet, what does prophet mean? To speak or to sing. So Elijah came to bring an anointing to seek, speak and sing, to chant. And what was I singing? Chanta. Okay, so she's going to look up the next one. Okay, we got to find Reese. Quick, quick. We were running around like crazy because at this point we're pretty fired up. Obviously you're pretty fired up. I never believed you could find your tongues in the Word of God, much less have them line up with the word study you had just done, much less them be in grammatical sequence. Hallelujah. How does that work? Ooh, okay, so we go to race. Here it is. It means it's Latin, which is a language no longer spoken. 
another dead language. It means a thing, a matter, a point, a cause or action used in a legal phrase. Things done, material facts, or a matter already decreed. So this is the matter of decree. That's God's word. That's God's word. So what did this really mean? This is saying the chanter, the prophet chanter of the round dance Decreeing the matter of God with the strong drink for the pulling up. Hallelujah. And that's wow. what I had been singing in this song. Glory to God. According, you know, singing in this song. And then just by an unction, was able to look it up in the Word of God, or look it up in Webster's Dictionary for the interpretation. And it all lines up. What does it line up with? Shanta lines up with Abel Melaho. Grace lines up with... Elisha, Bosa lines up with Nimshi, which is the pulling up in the strong drink. These line up with the anointings that were sent by, that are to come by the spirit of Elisha. Now, how many of you have experienced the strong drink? That's Elisha. People, that's the anointing of Elisha. Are you going to miss your visitation? But the church doesn't see it. They don't know it. I don't even know why I got this. It was the craziest thing. We got so drunk after this went on, I gotta tell you, Fran couldn't drive home. So she had to stay with me. I didn't have a second thing, so here she is staying there. We laughed all night. Five o'clock in the morning, how'd I take my son to swimming class? He was on swim team. And I put the dog in the car, I don't know why. And I drove off and dumped him off, and I'm still just as drunk as could be. And I reached over to my little dog. I've never seen this happen, but this is, you know, it says whole, all the creation waits for the sons of God. And I reached over and I petted her under the neck. We were about 15, 20 minutes out. Petted her under the neck and said, oh, you're just a little boozy dog. And he called her a little boozing dog. Do you know my dog got drunk? <laughs> I'm going to tell you, you think that this can't happen, but I am serious. The whole rest of the way, the dog, west of the way home, the dog starts going. <laughs> it wasn't just a little while. It went on for the whole 15 miles. <laughs> this dog is, is, I don't speak in tongues, so what is doing that it wasn't barking? The sounds I've never heard her make before. <laughs> <laughs> and she was just a basket in it. Wow. Because the spirit of Elijah. That's the spirit of God, his presence. Now, that was the sign and wonder. Now I want you to go to Matthew 17, 1. <laughs> You know, it says in the Word of God that the Jews, that we have got this great thing in part to provoke the Jews to jealousy. To provoke them to jealousy so they will want to, we have this anointing to provoke them to jealousy so that they will want to know the Lord. And remember what Jesus said. He said, I pray that you are all one, that the whole world will know that I am the Lord. So what kind of power comes when this unity is released upon the earth? That's the question. We know what Elijah's come to do, but what, what is the power? I'm going to go with that. In Matthew 17, 1, this is what it says. After six days... Jesus taketh Peter, James, John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain, mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them who? Moses. 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 And who else? Elijah. Elijah. Talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, is it good for us to be here? If thou wilt, let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. But Jesus wouldn't let him make three tabernacles. Why? They're not supposed to be in three separate buildings. 
Okay, so who was up there on the Mount of Transfiguration talking to Jesus? Peter. Moses and Elias. Nothing that happened to Jesus is a coincidence. What happens when there is the anointing of Moses coming together with the anointing of Elijah? What happened? Transfiguration. Oh, now do we have power to save the whole world? That's the power to save the whole world. Christian church, we have got to step up to the call of Elijah. The problem is, I think we're probably the only little unit right now that even's heard this message. And the day of our visitation is here. And it's not just to have fun. It's to evangelize the Jews because when they come in and we're one, what kind of power are we going to have it just means to pull up as with a windlass. What pull up as a windlass is, is like a I fishing tackle. Of that. Okay? Mm -hmm. Or if you had a well and you had the big cranks where you'd pull something up, that anointing is to pull up out of the wells of Abraham. Those are ancient mm -hmm. anointings. The Jews have a connection to the land. Okay? They have a covenant with the land that the Gentiles don't have. And in the land is the ancient anointings. It's that ancient anointing that's going to come together with Elijah through the unity of Yeshua the Lord. And it's going to release a kind of glory that we have never seen. Uh, David Herzog's a Jew that's married to a Gentile lady, and they are having these kind of miracles oh, in their meetings. They're having uh, amethyst found on the floor in their meetings. They're having people cover up gold dust, creative miracles, brain dead boy completely healed, instant weight loss, mm, people losing 60 pounds in a meeting. Not just one, two or three of them are doing it. And the reason that's happening right now is because, I'm getting off on something now, but I'll tell you this is really awesome. In the Word of God, it says in the Old Testament that the fat belongs to God. That was the altar. The fat was to be burned on the altar. Okay? And it was associated with first fruits. First fruits comes three days after Passover. And Jesus was resurrected three days after Passover as the first fruits. Now, this is how the first fruits work. On three days' first fruit, I go into my field and I'm going to mark every plant that has got a bud. Oh, here is my husband. He is getting saved. I see this happening. I'm going to mark that. Okay. Over here is my other Christ. Oh! Christ the Healer Church, the one new man beginning. Oh, I'm going to mark that one time. Something on there. I'm going to mark that one. Oh, another bud. Uh, the finances you want for the kingdom of God. Oh, I'm going to mark that. Now, when you do accounting, this is called the Omer, the O-M-E-R. Every day, from first fruits until Pentecost, it's your responsibility to go out every day. Ooh, I want this one. Here is the first fruit that I marked. Ooh, got to weed it, got to water it. God bless it, pray over it, water it. Okay, now I go over to Christ the Healer Church. Oh, pull that tear up. Get that weed out. Take care of this. Ooh, ooh. Really work on this. I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to bless it. Go to the next one. Your financial blessing. Oh, God, give him a financial blessing. Oh, Lord, we ask for his blessing. Oh, Lord, this, and we pray over it, water it. Watch our mind, watch our hearts. We toil in our field. Day two. Do the same thing every three days. That's what they would do. They would go into the field and they would take care of the first buds because those were gods. On day 50, the, the ones that have been marked, it wasn't necessarily 10%. It was whatever was budding. Day 50, they go out and they harvest those big, full, ripe ears. And they put them in their basket. They take them in and they put them on the altar. And God's fire descends. What happened? Jesus tended each of us for 50 days. What happened on 50 days on Pentecost? The fire That's right. fell. Now it says right with that verse, it says, bring your first fruits into to God. Now it's only a once a year offering. It's not all the time, see? But it is coupled in there, it says, and do not 
seed the kid of the goat in its mother's milk. That goes in there. It says that the two things together. First fruits and don't cook your the kid of the goat in the mother's milk. Now that word mother's milk in Hebrew can also mean a different word. She doesn't bother me, it's okay. Yes, I want this ready. Okay. You can have it. I want that. Okay. Okay, so you see, oh. that can also mean fat. It was a pagan Canaanite practice to take a kid or a, a, a young animal and kill the mother and remove the liver and the kidney. Now naturally in your body, over the liver and over the kidney is a large piece of fat. God meant it that way. When you're pregnant, they're even more because you're trying to take care of the other nurse. They would take that fat and use it as lard to fry the young animal. It was a fertility rite, and then they would take the young animal, and they would use it to bless their groves, to bless the wives of Baal, to bless their, uh, use it in their fertility uh, parties, which were very immoral. And they would use that and offer it up to what they call Baal, which we know as Satan, for a blessing upon their crops. So you see, the fat belongs to God. And I believe we're seeing the miracles of instant weight loss because no longer are we going to have our first fruits lost. Right. Because when we come together in the one new man, understanding our roots, and we can worship with those who have supported this ancient pathway all these times, the fat's going to go to God. And these people that are in these meetings where the spirit's falling like that, okay. that's what's happening. Hallelujah. That's a blessing of the first fruits. It's a prophetic activation Glory. of what's going on in the spiritual realm of the first fruits. I'm going to say one thing about Passover. I'm kind of getting into stuff I wasn't going to say, but because you're going to Passover, I want to explain this. At Passover, there's four cups of wine. The, the first cup is sanctification. Jesus did that. He said, I sanctify myself that you may be one. The second cup was blessing. So he comes and he says, I'm going to bless you that you will be one. The third cup is redemption. He provided our redemption by going to the cross. So he fulfilled the third cup. But every Passover, there's a fourth cup drank, too. And Jesus said, I will not drink of this wine again until I drink new with you in my Father's kingdom. That's the marriage cup, the marriage of the Lamb. Okay? Now, in the Judaic tradition, when you get engaged, which is redemption, when you're engaged, that is as binding as if I were married to you. And as a man... As Jesus the husband, his job is now to go to his father's house that's wrong. and to prepare a room just for you. Well, that's not wrong. That's his job. To go to heaven. And he said, heaven. I go to heaven to prepare a place for you. In my father's house are many mansions. That's right. He took the third cup of redemption, which was his engagement to us. And he went into the father's house to prepare a place for us. Can you believe that? It's awesome. And he says, I will come back. And he's going to drink that cup with us anew in his father's house. That's the fourth cup of redemption. So you see, Passover has been fulfilled in part, but it has not been fulfilled in the wedding supper. And festival means actually a rehearsal. If you have a memorial, you can memorialize something that happened in the past, or you can memorialize something that you see happening in the future. Okay? The feasts of God are memorials to remember what happened in the past and also to see what's going to happen in the future. It's a rehearsal dinner. Passover now is a rehearsal dinner of our marriage to Jesus I don't expect, I am not going to miss my no, rehearsal dinners no, 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 no. <laughs> because we're prophesying the return of Jesus. Keeping Passover in the Judaic tradition is very important because it is prophesying the return of Yeshua. 
But we have people in the Jewish community keeping it, and they don't even realize that the redemption cup has been drunk. You all know it's been drunk. You can come. You can come, and you can participate, and you can prophesy the fourth cup. Because you've got Elijah. Come on. You know what that does to Satan's principalities in the heavens when you get up there and prophesy the fourth cup? He trembles. Let's go get it. Because it prophetically has to be fulfilled. Amen. And we get to participate. Hallelujah. Glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So y'all, come. But we are looking for the future of prophesying that we are bringing Elisha there. That's our commission. That's what we're doing. And we are also participating in that, that we are drinking of the marriage cup. We're going with understanding. This church is going to go with understanding. It's going to frighten Satan to death. <laughs> so anyway, that's kind of it. But that gives you some understanding of the festivals. And it gives you, it lets you know who you are. And it lets you know what you're carrying. The anointings of Elijah. Awesome responsibility. So thanks for having me. If you do have any questions about the message or you'd like to speak to someone at Christ the Healer Church, you can reach them at this phone number. Please call us. We'd love to hear from you. And if you have maybe an urgent prayer need, don't hesitate to call. We have loving people who will love you. They will pray with you. God's power is present in their life, and it can minister to you and set you free. So please call because you will be loved, you will be received, and you will be helped. God doesn't make any junk, and you're not junk. He wants you to call. He wants to know who you are. He wants to be your Lord. So call us. When you call Christ the Healer, we have a free gift for you. Um, there is a gift with healing scriptures and music on a free CD that we'd like to send you. God's Word is very powerful, and this Word can get into your spirit and bring about a miracle in your life. Heal your body, heal your mind, heal your family. It can really rejuvenate and bring you new life. So please call. We'd like to hear your input on what we preached today. We'd like to hear of who you are, talk to you. We'd like to know if you received Jesus as your Lord. And we'd like so very much to send you this gift because I promise it will bless you. You can also reach us at our website, which is www.cthem.org. We so look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. The following music and scriptures will be a, a short sample of what you will receive when you get this CD into your home. God bless. Jesus loves you. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear. That shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that are the Father hath are mine. <laughs>